Hey, what's the crack and welcome to or back to the channel. Today's episode is part two of a three part series where I introduce you to a good starting workflow for working with multicam clips in DaVinci Resolve. Today, I'm going to show you how to edit your multicam clip and by edit, I mean perform cuts and change camera angles. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the software and start learning. There are effectively two main ways that you can go about editing multicam clips in DaVinci Resolve. Both have pros and cons, and in my experience with the style of content that I find myself working with, each are better suited to different scenarios. So the main takeaway for you here is to analyze the pros and cons of each and take what works best for you and your workflow and apply it accordingly. The first style is to treat the multicam clip like any other clip that you can work with. So whether your editing style is dragging all around the screen or whether it's using the blade tool and dragging around the screen or it's using in and out points and all the keyboard shortcuts imaginable, whatever your style may be, just go ahead and edit it like that. The key then is to know how to switch between camera angles. It's important to remind you that in my case here, I'm only going about changing the angle of the video track. I don't want to switch away to the B cameras audio because that's just scratch audio and sounds terrible. So in my case, I'm always, always only changing angles on the visual side of things. Your case may be different. To select only the video portion of the clip, you just do an alt click on the video portion. To change camera angle, you have two methods. The first is to right click on the clip in question and come down to change multicam clip angle and then just switch this to whatever you want, your A, your B or your C camera in my case are the options. The other option is to use the keyboard shortcuts Alt and 1, 2 and 3 in my case for the A, B and C camera. If you've got even more cameras, this could extend out to Alt, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. In my experience, this method is better suited to editing an interview because typically an interview, you're going to be cutting out a lot of content. Typically for me, I will go about this by editing with my ear. So I'm listening to what the subject is saying and I'm making my cuts based on that. And once I have my ear satisfied, then I'll worry about the visuals. I'm a big believer in if you can sell the ear on cuts, you can sell the visuals, no problem. Because in this case, we have multiple camera angles we can cut between and later on we'll have B-roll that we can use to cover up cuts too. And it's because of that style of workflow that I prefer this method for cutting up an interview. This second method, in my experience, has been better suited to when I'm editing a performance such as a musical performance. And the key distinguishing factor that leads me to believe this is the fact that with a performance, rarely are we cutting out content. Typically, all we're doing is just changing between the angles. So for this second method, first you will double click the clip in the timeline and this will load it onto your source preview window. Now I'm going to close my inspector here so that I can see both my source and my timeline preview windows. Next, you'll want to do this little drop down menu here and switch this over to the multicam option. This makes this an interactive panel that we can simply click on to perform one, the cutting and two, the changing of the camera. And best of all, we can do this in real time playback. Before I show you this in action, first I want to talk about these two groups of settings with this multicam editing window. Starting with this two by two drop down, you can see you have several options. What this is, is the vertical by horizontal grid view of the multicam clip window. In my case, two by two is perfect. If you had nine camera angles, you could switch to three by three and you will now see them all. So I'm just going to switch this back to two by two because that's what I need. The next options are these three icons here. By default, it'll be on this film strip and music note icon. And what this means is when you click on this interactive interface here and you perform a cut and a change to the camera angle, this will do it to both the video track and the audio track. If you want just the audio track to be affected, you can click over to the music note icon by itself. In my case, I want to affect only the video track, so I'm going to switch this over to this film strip icon. And by doing that, when I go clicking on the interactive interface, I will perform a cut and an angle change to only the video track. 
And again, just a friendly reminder, depending on your requirements, will determine which settings you choose here. So now let's actually look at this in action. To perform real-time editing of this clip, I will click on the camera angle within this interactive window for the multicam. When I click on a camera angle, a cut and an angle change will occur at the point at which the playhead in the timeline was at the time of clicking. After using this technique, if for any reason you want to either change your mind on which camera angle a certain clip is on, or indeed where those cuts take place, you can revert back to the methods we covered in the first technique of right-clicking on a clip and changing the camera angle by going to switch multicam clip angle and choosing which one, or those keyboard shortcuts, Alt, 1, 2, and 3, respectively. And then also you can change the timing of the cut itself by just rolling that cut up and down the timeline. You can drag this with the mouse or you can use the nudge keys for a single frame left or right of comma and full stop. So what you're watching right now is me utilizing some of these techniques that we just covered to trim down the interview first. Then once I have that down and I've sold my ear on it, I start dressing it with relevant B-roll and cutaways. And then once I have that in place, I will finalize my camera angles. Now let's call this picture lock. And we're now ready to move on to part three of this series, which is how to finalize the audio and the color of your timeline. And the reason I'm going to focus in on these in particular is because there's this constant battle of, do we perform effects, adjustments, and parameters on the multicam clip level, or do we go into the multicam clip and perform these to the original clips level? There's pros and cons to both and reasons to do one over the other, depending on the situation. So it's good for you to understand the full workflow of both options so you can best go about implementing them to your personal workflow. As always, I hope you found that tutorial helpful. And if you did, please do consider giving the video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. That way you'll get notified of when part three comes out. Have a good one and I hope to see you in the next video. We came to fight.